day. Welcome back to RC Model Reviews. And today I want to talk about something quite important. If you fly FPV, you've noticed that digital is now the way to go. I still fly quite a bit of analog, but I am increasingly flying FPV using digital systems such as DJI, such as the HD0 system, and Walk Snail. Now these systems offer a, a better image. Sometimes they offer you know more consistent performance up to the limits of range. There are many, many benefits associated with digital FPV systems, albeit at a higher cost than the old analog stuff. But uh, if you don't know how these digital systems work, I'm going to link in the description to a couple of videos that I've done explaining the, in hopefully simple terms how the technology behind these systems actually works. It's quite different to, or the, the DJI system is quite different to the HD0 system. And the cornerstone of the DJI and the Walk Snail system is a thing called a video encoder. Now the video encoder does a very, very important task. It takes the massive amount of digital data that comes out of the camera and compresses it down until it's small enough to send through the tiny amount of bandwidth we have available on the 5.8 gigahertz band. So that codec determines the real performance of the system. Now DJI have got their codecs finely tuned. That's why the image looks so damn good. Walksnail are catching up, but they've still got a bit of work to do. Review on Walksnail coming soon. Um, you'll see on the Walksnail system, there, there's some patterning, some uh, compression artifacts that just aren't there on the DJI system. And the reason that the DJI looks so much better is their codec is just performing so much better. But what if we had a better codec again? What if we could go one step beyond DJI's pretty good performance? Well, I noticed this, what you're seeing on your screen now. I noticed this on the internet the other day, and it's from AMD, the people who make you know, graphics cards, radio and graphics cards, things like that. The, um, and it is a new media accelerator for high volume streaming. Now you're probably asking yourself, what has high volume streaming got to do with FPV? Well, stop and think for a moment. When we fly FPV with a digital system, we're just watching a video stream. Just like when you go onto YouTube and watch a live stream, it's pretty much the same damn thing. It's the same basic technology. We've got a camera that produces massive amounts of data going into a video encoder, which squeezes it down until there's, uh, it's small enough to squirt down a part of the internet, you know, whether you're connected by a 4G or 5G modem, or whether you've got fiber or ADSL, VDSL, you must compress it down so it'll fit easily through that limited amount of bandwidth. And it's the same with our FPV models. The video transmitter receiver combination only has so much bandwidth available. So the smaller you can make that image without losing quality, the better the results. And that's what AMD have done here. They've created a new chip that will do even better video encoding. And at, to date, that video encoding has been a bit of secret source stuff. Well, it still is. Um, the, the DJI have their own special chip that does the, the video encoding. Walksnail use an off-the-shelf chip that, that they've got special access to bits, and they're writing their software to support their own encoder. So it's, um, it's not something that is open source. It's, you've got to take manufacturer's word for it. And here's AMD. They've entered this market with this, the Alveo, Alveo MA350. Now, the Alveo 3 MA, uh, MA350 is a server form card. It's designed to go in racks of equipment in a big data center somewhere and support streaming, whether that's live streaming from people with webcams or cameras on their computers, or whether it is actually streaming pre-recorded content, such as the sort of thing that Netflix and Prime Video do. So it's designed to turn large video files into much more efficient streams of video data. So uh, let's take a look at what it does and why it's so different. Well, here we go. It's an ASIC, which is a, an ASIC basically means it's a chip that's specially designed to perform one task and one task very well. It's not like a general CPU that can be used to do all sorts of things. It is specially designed and optimized to do one thing. In this case, to compress video and decompress video so that we can get the best picture quality through the smallest possible amount of bandwidth. Um, and as it says here, optimal video quality at reduced bandwidth. Uh, so what does this mean? Actually, it supports H.264, which is what DJI's original system supported, uh, HV, HEVC, which is High Efficiency Video Encoding, uh, which is H.265. Another name for H.265. That's what DJI and Walksnail are using now. So it supports both those things. And AV1. Now, this is a really important thing. AV1, because AV1 is the new standard for video compression and streaming. Benefits of AV1 there's no license. Now to use H.264 and H.265, you have to get a license, which puts the price of everything up. AV1 was developed as on a license-free model. No one needs to pay a license to use it. So that should mean that things will be cheaper if they use 
AV1. But the most important thing about AV1 is it's more efficient than anything that's gone before it. It can put more of that high resolution image into a smaller amount of bandwidth and that makes for a better experience. So let's take a look at the card. Here it is. Yeah, you're not going to fit that in a Model A. It's not going to fit in your tiny whoop. No way on earth. It's, it, is, it is a huge uh, form factor card designed to go into servers. Rack mounted, as you'll see further on, um, down here somewhere. Where are we? Further on. Yeah, you can have all these massive cards all stuck in a server, supporting a huge amount of uh, of streaming. Um, but that's not what we'd want to use it for. We would want to use it for FPV. Let's go back up because I want to show you some of the other stuff. This is the chip here. Um, it's not a small chip. Unfortunately, you're not going to fit it in a tiny whoop <laughs> at any stage in, at the moment. But it does mean that perhaps AMD or some other manufacturer will, because this is a multi-stream, this will handle up to two, two streams, uh, two devices per card. I don't know how many streams it handles. Does it tell us? I don't see any information. Should have done my homework, shouldn't I? Never mind. Um, so multiple streams so we should be able to, they should be able to get that smaller if they're just focusing on one stream and here's some real kick-ass stuff ultra low latency as low as eight milliseconds eight milliseconds if you look now at dji and walks now which are the you know the, the best quality video uh, video fpv systems digital fpv systems they are typically 20 to 28 milliseconds at the lowest latency so 8 milliseconds, that brings us into the same territory as analog. It brings us into the same territory as HD0. Suddenly HD0's big claim to fame would disappear because this would be an 8 millisecond latency. And this, that's up to 4, 4K, 4K and 60 frames a second. So mm, that makes a big difference, does it? And I'll show you the final thing that really makes this stand out. We go down here, 1 watt per channel. 1 watt, because if you've got a, any digital FPV system, Put your hand on the video transmitter. Even if it's just in 25 milliwatt mode, it's damn hot. A lot of the power that system, that the video transmitter consumes, isn't going into transmitting a signal. It's going into encoding the video. It's very power, in the past, been very power intensive to encode that video into a small, highly efficient stream. This uses just one watt. One watt, that, you know, that's that's a tenth of an amp on a 3S pack would go into encoding the video. It's nothing. That's fantastic. Um, so I'm really impressed with this. If we can convince AMD or some other you know manufacturer to put this kind of technology into a chip that we could use in the digital FPV systems, it would be a game changer, a massive game changer. So will it happen? Well, I can't see AMD doing it because our market is so small. It's such a tiny market. They've obviously realized that streaming online is a much bigger market. Look at Netflix, look at Prime Video, look at YouTube. That's where the money is. So I don't think we'll see them spinning off an FPV variant of this. But that's not to say that some other manufacturer won't go to AMD and say, we're prepared to fund the creation of a smaller chip. We think we can do something with it in the market. I don't know. Unfortunately, we are a small market, but it shows what could happen and what probably will happen in the future. We'll see digital FPV systems that use AV1 and get much better performance. We'll see digital FPV systems that use these low power, high efficiency encoders to give us more bang for our watt. And we'll see it happening in the coming years. I'm absolutely sure of it. Now, they do have a software development kit. I would actually if I had the money, I would invest in this. I would invest in it and just see what's possible. I mean, you could make a bigger board and stick it in a larger fixed wing model and just get a feel for it. But it would be really interesting to play around with. Unfortunately, I don't have the, the money to do that. I'm not soliciting money to do that. I have plenty of other projects on my plate, which is why there haven't been any videos on this channel for a couple of months now, because I've been on this and I'm still on this. And there'll be pages going up on the RC Model Reviews website as soon as I'm ready to, as soon as I've finished the documentation, basically, I'll be putting those up. They're not there yet, don't go looking, but I will post, I'll do a video and I'll put a link in uh, that video to the files for building your own. Um, that's about it. I don't, there's a product brief here, I haven't looked at that. What does that say? It's a PDF, let's have a look at it. What does it tell us? Anything new? I'm not sure. Um, would you join me as we look through this? Okay, so yes, it will up to 32 streams. So imagine that chip could be so much smaller if you were just doing one stream, which is all you need for FPV. Um, 1080p is probably all you need as well, although it, it will do 
4K, as it says. Um, support for AV1, H.264, H.265 at latency as low as 8 milliseconds for a 4K 60p image. That would be mind-blowing. And has a maximum resolution of 8K. Ooh, this is, this is pretty damn good stuff. Pretty damn good stuff. 8 milliseconds for 4K streaming and AV1 um, file. That, that Unbelievable. Anything else? Um, yeah, I'll put, I'll put a link to these files in the description of this video. You can go and have a look for yourself. Um, and it's got, it's AI enabled. My goodness, AI, it's everywhere, isn't it? It's content aware. So that would be interesting. Um, yeah. Here's the hardware stuff. Um, yep. Um, and it, it'll do 10 bit formats as well. That's another step we haven't seen is move to 10 bit video. Um, video processing has got uh, all that stuff. AI processor. Uh, yeah, 35 watt typical power. But remember, that's for all those streams. One watt per stream. One watt per stream. Fantastic. So, yep, that's it. Um, so, yeah, um, as I say, links in the description to this video, or to these files in the video, if you want to go and have a look at what they've got to say about it. And I'd like to hear from you. Would you be happy to pay more money? to get better quality on your digital video? Or is DJI good enough? Is it just good enough? I don't know. Um, you tell me, I know it's pretty good. I haven't got the, I haven't got an O3E unit yet. So, and I don't have the Integra goggles. So I'm just working with the old stuff. It's all I got, it's all I use. Um, but there is, as I say, there's a review of the Walksnail coming up soon because I, that's been on the back burner because, as I say, because of things like this, that'll be coming up. And we might discuss in that video whether Walksnail can catch up to DJI in terms of delivering the best possible performance. A um, few interesting things to discuss on that topic. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. If you've got comments, questions, anything, go down to the comedy bit below. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. And I will see you, or see you soon on another video on RC Model Reviews. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.